Hey guys, it's Julian, and today I am going to be making a Romanian Minimal House track from start to finish. So I've got a ton of requests for this one, and I'm just going to be going from this blank project file you see here all the way to a finished mastered track. Um, so you can skip to the timestamp at the top of the description now if you want to hear the finished track. I'll give you a moment to do that. And yeah, so as usual, you get the project file and samples and MIDI and presets and all that kind of stuff that you just heard that I'm about to make in this video in the description, so make sure to check for that. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there because it will be available shortly. And yeah, let's get started. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is we're going to get rid of these return tracks here and this extra little audio track. And we're going to go to 122 BPM. You know, usually between like 115 and 125. I, it's a pretty broad range, I know, but like... Kind of like slower house tempos like this are what you want for this. Because it's meant to be a little bit more chill. You know, it's not to be meant to be like super high energy. And you're not trying to do everything to just make it super powerful. So, yeah, a little bit slower, kind of more chill tempo works here. So, what we're going to do first is I'm going to make a kick. Or I'm going to get this kick. And I'm also going to make a bass. Um, You know, with all house music really, like the kick and the bass are really the foundation of the track. You know, it's really about how those two are kind of working together and then kind of everything on top of that groove. So we're going to make a four-bar clip here. I'll make it eight bars so we can start with a clean little eight-bar loop. And let's just duplicate this over a bunch of times. And now what we can do is... Okay, sounds good. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to check what key it's in. I believe it's an F. Yeah, okay, so it's bouncing around, but it's an F. Um, and so what we're going to do now is we're going to make a bass line. So let's get operator here. And I have an idea for a bass line. You know, your bass lines in this style are meant to be more kind of just, I mean, like I was saying with the kick, like chill and kind of deep and not super in your face, not super intense, just something kind of smoother that like is keeping the groove in the background. So... Yeah, let's do that. And then we'll put that little note there. Awesome. Sounds pretty good. So from here, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of process these two elements because they do sound pretty solid together. You know, they fit together well, but we can make them fit together a little bit more. So the first thing that I'm going to do is actually with the operator, I'm just going to take the second oscillator and bring it up a little bit. There we go. So we're using FM synthesis here. And we're really just making, like you can hear, a little bit fatter of a sine wave. It's, this is meant to not be necessarily like a super, like we don't want, you know, you don't want like something super digital like that. You want something pretty warm still. But it's just making the bass a little bit fatter. And what we're also going to do to make the bass a little fatter is we're going to put a saturator on there. So I'm just going to turn the drive up a bit. There we go. We don't want to go too hard. Again, we still want this to be chill. We're not going for, like, power with the bass line. We're going for groove. So what I'm going to do after that, the final thing on the bass, is we're going to just side chain into the kick real, real quickly. So I'm just going to get that side chain there with this compressor kick. There we go. And then I'm also going to do a tiny bit to the kick. I'm going to just get a saturator on there and just give that a bit more kind of power as well. And again, not too much. Just a little something to kind of fatten it up. Cool, I'm going to turn these down a little bit as well. Perfect, so the next thing we're going to do here is I'm going to make some percussion. And for the first layer of percussion, I'm actually going to synthesize something. So what we're going to do is we're going to get an operator here, and I'm going to just put in 16th notes. It's going to be out of key. But what we're going to do then is we'll drag that out, and I'm going to change this from a sine wave to white noise, and then we're going to shorten it a little. 
And there we go. So we have like that. Then we'll turn it down a bit. Cool. So then what we're going to do from there is I'm going to turn. There we go. Turn the K up a little bit. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bandpass filter. And so what the bandpass is going to do is we'll turn the resonance up. As you can hear, now we have this cool kind of like. This cool sort of like morphing percussion where you're changing that filter frequency and it's. You know, it's adding a lot of cool movements. So what we're going to do is I'm going to actually automate this. We're going to make a little pattern. I'm going to just do something like this. Yeah, that's cool. Alright, sounds pretty good. So I just wanted to, you know, kind of give that some space and listen to it because with this style of Minimal House, it's very much about, like, the way the track is going over time. Like, it's one thing to just have, like, you know, a nice little loop. But it's another thing to have a little loop that you can keep repeating over and over and over again. And it still feels interesting, you know? It doesn't feel like it's just getting boring or kind of uh, tired. So I want to hear how that sounds. And I'm going to add a little bit of variation to this. Like, we can do something... Like this. Yeah, there we go. That sounds cool. And then we'll just duplicate that over a whole bunch of times. But yeah, it's adding a lot of cool stuff to the groove. And I'm going to put a tiny bit of reverb on that as well. Yeah, there we go, just gives it a little bit of space. And let's try some erosion as well. Oh, that sounds cool. You can hear the erosion is just kind of adding like some crispiness to it. Awesome. So from here, I'm going to add some more percussion. I have a few samples prepared. Um, I'm going to take this hi-hat here. I'm not sure which one I'm going to use. I have two. I'm going to use one of them for like the main hi-hat and one of them to be the percussion. But let's take this and we'll just put it in on the upbeats. Cool, and what we're going to do with this also is I'm going to take it and kind of shorten it so we can take the envelope here. And just make it super small like this. So this is how the track will start out. Basically, we'll have it like this at the start. And then at some point, we'll get the full hi-hat like that. And we can even do that a different way. Like, maybe I could try it by having this one come in. Like, we'll have... There we go. Like, we'll have the short one playing here. And then all of a sudden. I don't know. We'll see how I end up doing it when uh, when things go on. But, yeah. So, to start off with, we're going to just get this little small hi-hat. Where you take it and just shorten the envelope. So, yeah. This is a really good technique for making this kind of minimal stuff, you know. Because you're used to like a lot bigger hi-hats in like other styles of house music. So when you hear this little one here, it still works just fine. But it's just so different, you know. It's such a like different vibe. So what we're going to do after that is... Let's add in the clap right now. And then, yeah, we'll just put that on the two and on the four. There we go. And then we'll copy that over a bunch of times. Okay, cool. The groove is starting to build. So from here, 
I'm going to get a drum rack, and I'm going to get all these different percussion sounds that I have. We're actually just going to grab, like, all of this and put it in the drum rack here. There we go. And we're going to just make ourselves a little percussion loop. So I just have a bunch of different sounds, like these kind of smaller, more minimal style percussions. And, yeah, we can just play around with them. If I pitch that one up a little. I don't know. make the hi-hat a little bit longer there it like kind of fills out the groove so that's kind of what we're going to be working with later but yeah so let's keep adding a little bit more here i have these shakers as well and i think these shakers are actually like something uh, pretty important for the style because like with romanian minimal house like the one thing i can say is it's very organic it has this really lively kind of like like, it's clear that it's being programmed either on a computer or on a, you know, a sample or something like that. But you can really feel this, like, organic live feeling to it. And so these shakers are a really good way to add that because we have all this sort of digital sounding percussion. And, like, Minimal House in general has a very digital vibe to it. By adding some shakers in here, we're kind of bringing in something more organic. I'm just going to turn that shaker down a little bit. But you can hear what those add to the groove. And you can hear, like, how this has come from just this kick in this bass line. There's something really, like, full and lively sounding. You can kind of hear, like, the difference there and, like, how it builds up. Like, that's really the goal of these videos where I'm just making a track from scratch. It's, like, it's not so much to make you this thing and just show you, you know, how to go, I guess, and just copy me and do it yourself. But really, it's just for you to see somebody doing the process. Like, especially with styles like this that are just so underground and so, like, like yeah, it's just so, like, it's so hard to find information about this kind of stuff on the Internet. I just want to show you guys, I guess, the technique of, like, how you go from the start and and do something like this. Or even just show you seeing somebody doing something something like this from the start, I think, can really help. So, yeah. Sounding pretty good so far. The key, also, with the really small hi-hat, 
is you just need to make sure it's loud enough in the mix, because like, you know, if you have it too quiet, it can kind of get behind a little bit easier, but about there is good. Let's bring in that other hi-hat now. I'll just take that first sample that I had, and we'll have them layered together. Yeah, so then that one comes in. And you can hear, like, it kind of elevates the track. Like, when you've been hearing just this since the start. It's like, it feels like, you know, you're finally getting that missing link. Like, it's, it's very psychological in that way. It's, it's more about, like, playing with, like, what the listeners have heard and, like, knowing what their brain is wanting, I guess, or, like, what it is expecting to hear and how you've already subverted that. And then, like, just kind of being able to play around with that, if that makes any sense. Because, I mean, the majority of people hearing this aren't going to know, oh, yeah, if you bring in, you know, the second hi-hat, all of a sudden that adds so much more. But it's, it's a small detail that you as the producer need to know to be able to give the listener that experience. So, yeah, so what we're going to do from here... We need something a little bit more melodic, because all we have right now is just the bass line and a bunch of percussion. So I'm going to get an analog here, actually. And we're going to make a little, like, droning chord. I'm going to just make a little two-bar loop here. And let's make a little F minor. But what I'm going to do is basically the only notes we're going to use are just the F and the G sharp from the minor chord, so the root note and the fifth. And then I'm going to bring in what's actually called the ninth here this little note right one semitone under the third and we're gonna just make that like one long chord here and then i'll drag that over and then let's get the side chain on there from the bass i'll just copy it cool and then what we're gonna do with this one is we're gonna just use one oscillator we're gonna make it a sine wave put it up an octave and what i'm actually gonna try and do here is let's try putting these two notes up an octave Now let's do that. Okay. Cool. So we'll turn off the filter here, and then I'm going to get the amp envelope. I'm going to turn that down a little. Nice. Cool. And then let's get a bit of vibrato on there. And some unison. tracks especially romanian minimal tracks or i guess rominimal if you will um there's a lot of like kind of just background chill chord sounds like this you know like i can even put that back in the background more but it's like it's not meant to be so much in your face and i'm actually going to do even more to kind of obscure it but you know it's like that like it's just kind of in there it's it's not meant to be really in your face it's just meant to be adding, like, something that's missing. Because, again, this on its own, like, as minimal as you want it to be, isn't going to carry it the whole track. Like, you need something melodic like this. So that's what we're doing here. We can play around with this a bit. We can try, like, some effects. Like, let's try a phaser on there, actually. I want to hear what that's going to sound like. Uh, we'll put an LFO on it. That sounds cool. 
again, like just trying to obscure it a bit. And maybe we can even add like a bit of erosion on here after that. <laughs> sounds cool so from here i'm gonna add like one more sort of chord stab we're gonna get another analog actually and i'm gonna just make something that comes in kind of like yeah there like just something i don't think this is gonna be playing throughout the track but i just want something that i can kind of play with later you know like maybe there will be a breakdown where this comes in or something delay as well. Let's try putting the compressor on their side, chaining it to the kick. Yeah, that's cool. And the key with the sound like this is you don't want to side chain it too much because if you do, you'll hear it. it sounds kind of weird. You know, you get like something like that. You want to let it ring out a bit in that next part. But it's still a little bit ducked by the side chain. So yeah, and we can kind of work with this one as well. Switch this to a square wave. Give it some pulse width. Yeah, we we'll use the filter here. I've got the envelope on it and I'm just turning the filter frequency down. You know, I'm just trying to take it from just like what we had at the start, which was obviously just like a very dry, clean sort of saw wave sound, and just give it something a bit different and make it just a little bit more interesting. So I'm also going to put a bit of vibrato on this. Yeah, that's cool. It's a lot of vibrato, but that makes it kind of cool. Like, we're going for texture here less than we are, like, you know, perfect uh, sort of musicality, I guess, because of the way that the style is meant to sound. But yeah, I'm also going to add a bit of this resonator to this. So if you don't know the resonator, I use it a lot in my videos, but it's a really good way to add this kind of cool, like, metallic vibe to your sounds. Like... You can hear what that's doing. It's making it sound like it's, like, like I said, kind of, like, metallic, and it's, like, resonating. So what we can do here... I'm going to turn tune this up to F minor. So we'll just put in F for the root note here, and then I've got plus 3 and plus 7. That sounds pretty cool. We can also try this B mode. Which is a bit more metallic. As you can hear, but no, let's go with A. So you can do that, just adding a little bit more of like that kind of metallic texture over top of it. Here's without it. And then with it. So you can hear what that's doing. It just helps to kind of make it less just simple and dull. Well, then we can give that like some cool filter automation when it comes in. Well, all right, so we pretty much have, like, the main idea here, it seems like. So I believe at this point I'm going to start arranging. So what we're going to do is we're going to just grab all this stuff, Control-X, and we're going to paste it here. And I'm going to just start with the kick. Or maybe this hi-hat. Yeah, that sounds cool. And maybe the bass line as well. Nah. 
We'll just start with the kick and the hi hat there. And maybe the percussion? No. Cool, and then after the first eight bars of just that, we'll go into. Yeah, that's cool. And then what I'm also going to do during this part is we're going to have the chord kind of start coming up. So we're just going to get an auto filter on that. And then you can see I'm just kind of like slowly automating it to come up. And we want to make the automation even slower. And there we go. So you can see, you know, I'm just doing little stuff here to kind of make it more interesting. Like I have the kick coming out there. And in this next part, we're going to have the percussion and the clap come in. So maybe we'll have those come in at that part, like something like this. Hey, okay, that sounds pretty cool. We got to duplicate that automation. So what I just did there was I just turned on what's called the automation lock. So basically with the automation lock, you can see I have it on right now. When it's orange, it is, it's on. When I duplicate something, it doesn't take the automation with it. But if I turn that off and I duplicate it, it does take the automation with it. So I did that because I was duplicating this here and I wanted it to go here and have the filter keep building. But yeah, so we got to copy that over. So it sounds pretty good so far. I think I'm also going to do something kind of cool with this automation in that part as well. Yeah, that sounds cool. Nice. It's kind of a nice way to bring it to life there. Cool, and then like I said, then when that hi-hat comes in there, the full hi-hat, we go from this... into this. So that's really bringing it to life there. Cool, and then I have the chord kind of filtering down. And it'll filter. And there we go. Like that. come up during that part cool so what we're basically doing here is just kind of like slowly building and dropping things like you can see like yeah it's not that hard it's just kind of like listening to the track like i think it can seem daunting to go from nothing to a finished arranged track but you can see how quickly it comes if you just go through and just try to do things as you hear them and kind of like as you feel they should come in as opposed to as you you know like if you're trying to follow some guide or if you try if you somehow believe like you're going to just find some some arrangement magic. Like, the arrangement magic is really just knowing how to just listen to the track and just let it breathe and do what it needs to do. And do what you feel it needs to do. Well, I want to hear that little transition again. But, yeah, so this is coming together pretty well. I mean, it's it's not that complicated. Um, Now, in this part, I want to keep going with the groove. I might get rid of the bass. Maybe we'll have this just kind of in the low end. Yeah, let's do that. Cool, and then we have the chord step. 
that I'm coming in here. I'm going to add some automation to that filter as well. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah, so what we're going to do then is then in this part, like, the drums will kind of come out. And we'll have this thing still going. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so you can see we have, like, kind of a breakdown here. And then it breaks down even more, because then we go. Into a part like this. Well, let's duplicate over the chord stub. And we'll copy this part. pretty solid um yeah again the arrangement comes together pretty quickly if you're just sort of like going through and doing it as it sounds best as opposed to trying to just go yeah let's have another part like this as opposed to just trying to go through and say like okay i'm just going to i mean even if you try to copy the structure of another track like first of all, i feel like this was faster for me than using a reference track Well, we can add some kind of cool automation for this part as well. Like, I'm just trying to, like, as I go through, like, any parts where I feel like there's an opportunity to make it more interesting or to do something a little bit differently with what we already have, I'm trying to do that. So cool, it's sounding pretty good. I'm gonna do some more like kind of mixing stuff here. Like we're gonna take these hi hats and put them in a groove, and I'm gonna just put some EQ on there. There we go, and then we'll take this thing. I'm gonna saturate it a little bit. I'm not trying to again. It's like with the kick in the bass. You're not trying to make it like too strong, but I do want to give this a little bit more. Kind of texture and warmth. And then we'll put an EQ8 on this as well. Cutting out the low end at the end of the tune. And I need to copy that automation over as well. So these are the things that you find. Like, this is why you got to go and do a stage like this where you're just, like, checking the mix and everything. It's because, like, you know, you got to you gotta remember to copy over all the automations and all that kind of stuff. So that sounds really good with the saturator. sounds pretty good. These sound clean. I'm going to put a little 
Yeah, no turn on there. See if this needs a low cut. Yeah, I can definitely use one. And then this one. Yeah, we'll cut out the low end on that. And let's add a bit of saturation as well to just kind of... Nice. Okay, cool. So, at this stage, it's starting pretty good. I believe it's time to do some mastering. So, what we are going to do is I'm going to take everything here. And we're just going to turn it down a little bit because you can see right now we're hitting the peak is at, according to this, minus 3.72. And right before you're mastering, you usually want your track to be hitting around like minus 4 to minus 6. So, let's turn this all down like 1, 2, 3. We'll turn it up. Plus one. There we go. So now we're at minus 5.83. So we're closer to the minus six end of the spectrum. Sounds good. So from here, I'm going to do a few things. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a bit of saturation on the mess. I'm going to turn the output down. And what we're going to do is just give it a bit of drive. And some bass frequency to kind of fatten it up. But you can hear it's just having it's just adding a little bit more fatness to the sound. Like if we listen to it without this, and then with it, it's really bringing everything out. Like this isn't completely doing it. this. Is why we have to use other effects, of course, on the master. But this really helps with this style because you want everything to sound cohesive and analog and warm and kind of glued together in the way that it does when you use analog gear. And so this is why I'm using some saturation on the master. You know. By putting the same effect on everything in the track at the same time, you're going to make everything sound a lot more cohesive and a lot stronger as well, just because everything is kind of being, you know, pushed together a little bit and glued together. Like, if we get a, I'll show you, like, if I take a saturator and I'll turn the, the output way down, and then we turn this drive up. <laughs> so, as comedic as that sounds, basically you can hear what's happening there is it's gluing everything together. Like, everything just kind of sounds like this big... You know, just sort of like one sound, right? And so that's what we're doing on a much smaller scale here with this saturator. We're not going as hard and it's not distorting it as much, but it is just doing that little bit of kind of like gluing everything together. So from there what we're going to do is we are going to get a bit of compression and this is just going to do even more gluing together the master. We're going to turn off the makeup gain. And what we're going to do here is I'm going to... Just turn this this threshold down until we're peaking or until we're compressing, just like the peak. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn up this attack. I talk about this a lot in my videos, but basically the way the attack on a compressor works is it's just how long it takes for the compression to kick in. So you can kind of compress your sounds and get like you know the body of the sound like over here compressed without messing with the transient too much. So that's kind of the goal there. But yeah, so now you can hear with this compressor. Here's without it. And then with it. So it's doing, you can hear again, this one's pretty subtle. Like with all of this stuff with mastering, you don't want it to be doing like the most. Like you really want it to be subtle. You shouldn't be fixing things in the master. You should be just kind of like, you know, cleaning it up a little bit at the end. So that's why we're doing everything very subtly. But you can hear the difference here. So here is without the compressor.
And then with it, so this is what really takes everything and, like, fattens it up a little bit more. And it's doing so in a pretty transparent way, you know. It's not, like, doing too much stuff to where it's so obvious that there's compression. It's just giving everything that little, like, oomph to kind of bring it out a bit more. Um, cool, and then the last thing we're going to do here is we're going to just get a limiter, and we are going to use this to get the volume up to 0 dB. So I'm going to put this up. 3 dB, because that's about where we're at right now, is minus 3. And there we go. We have full professional loudness in the track. So we've gone and we've mastered it now. And the reason why I'm using the limiter instead of just like a utility or something, because we're just using it for a clean gain boost, it's not doing that much limiting, but you can see if I turn a utility up plus 3 here. It's right touching, like right about to go over there. But it's still not quite hitting zero. So we, let's say we put this up minus 3.12 or whatever to hit what it says here. Minus 12. Is that or minus 0.12? You see, there will be some points there where it'll just go slightly over in like the left or the right ear. And so that's what the limiter does. It just solves those. And you can hear it sounds the same. So I'll show you. Here is with no mastering. And then with everything. So you can hear the big difference there. But yeah, sounding pretty good. So at this point, we've gone through. We've made a full track and kind of put all the stuff together. And then we've mixed it and mastered it. Let's hear the full track from start to finish.
well. Sounds pretty cool. Um, I believe that is going to be it for this one. So, as always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Let me know what style of track you want to see me make from start to finish next. As always, you can get the project file and samples and MIDI and presets, all that kind of stuff that we just created in this video in the description. So make sure to check for that. And if you are a patron on my Patreon, check there. Because it will all be available there shortly. And yeah, thank you so much, everybody. And I will see you tomorrow with another video.